So I guess I can start seeing the reason what brought me to San Bernardino were my parents. I was born and raised here. So 58 years ago, right up the street, I was born. And what was unique about it is the fact that I was the first child born to my parents. So I think that that was, I, I consider that unique. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was born actually in the community hospital, hospital San Bernardino, so I've lived here my entire life. Um, what made it unique for me is that I grew up on a ranch, and so I would always be in like the backyard tending with the chickens and being <laughs> up in like the avocado trees, and that's just how I grew up. And so I think what made it unique specifically was the amount of land that you can have here, because you know, you drive somewhere else and it's like these tiny little apartments and you don't even have a tree that you can look at. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really grateful that I just grew up around the cows, the chickens, all of the fruits and vegetables that my grandparents tended to when they came to the States. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, born and raised here too. My parents actually came here from South Central Los Angeles. And so, you know, I'm the firstborn too. And so I think what makes it special was it was the first place that I felt like I belonged and I understood. Mm -hmm. I was understood. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm actually a transplant. Um, I was born in LA County. I was born in East LA, actually. And uh, my parents moved out here in 2002, you know, because uh, after. Um, you know, kind of bouncing back from job to job, they were finally able to get like a stable living, secure a stable income, and um, they decided to move out here. And, you know, I, I lived in Rialto for a couple of years. Unfortunately, my parents lost their home in the recession. And, um, you know, we, we uh, relocated to San Bernardino. And I'm actually glad it's sort of like a blessing in disguise, I think, because um, because I lived in San Bernardino and because I was going to school at Valley College, I was able to, you know, link up with some awesome folks and um, and really just, you know, like you said, right, like find myself and really feel like I really belong somewhere. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of what brought me here. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, you have to have your DNA here to, for people to understand. And since you came here when you did, it's still just, there's a DNA and it's, it's interesting whenever we start seeing people from other places and they're like, I oh, just don't understand, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I know I lived like the first years of my life in, in, you know, LA County, Pomona, La Puente, but in a lot of ways, this is home. You know, mm -hmm. I always tell people that San Bernardino and the Inland Empire for me is home and it's, it's really where I want to be, right, for, for the rest of my life because mm -hmm. there's a lot of great people here, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like those places, like, kind of like our brothers and our sisters, like Pomona, LA, East LA, like they struggle with the same problems that we do. So I feel like we're able to like understand each other on that level. Even just like the people who are that in that community, like black and brown, like we just like know how to like party and like, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so my name's Anthony Victoria, and I am a communications organizer for the People's Collective for Environmental Justice. Also a longtime journalist, uh, covered community issues uh, for the Inland Empire Community News, and really just someone that likes storytelling and that really uses, um, you know, whether it's photography or uh, writing or, you know, videography um, to tell the stories of our communities. So. Well, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm a videographer and filmmaker here from San Bernardino, and um, I also am a digital producer for a company in Riverside. And yeah, I'm, I'm same like you. Like my passion is storytelling mm -hmm. and using film um, to to tell stories and change perspectives. Because I feel like there's a lot of power in that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, likewise. Um, my name's Yulisa Mendoza. Um, I'm a photographer and mainly like through my photography, it's fashion portrait photography. And so I do try to change the narrative of what is normally seen in photos and try to include more queer folks, more BIPOC 
books um, and just different body sizes and things you wouldn't normally see. Um, I'm also a botanical line artist. And so through that is where my storytelling comes through more. So I feel like um, I call it like my little ethnographic sort of thing because I am I graduated with a degree in anthropology. And so that's the way that anth that, that comes out is I ask people, um, what is your favorite flower and why? Because through there, you get to see um, people's stories or I hear where they came from or like there's always more to just that one flower. Um, and then I'm also the art director of San Bernardino for the Arts Connection, which I'm super excited about um, because that community here is just amazing. I'm excited to do stuff in San Bernardino itself because I've been doing things in Redlands for a while now. So I'm excited to create art here and make some change. Um, and I'm also part of the Artlands in Redlands. Um, and so there I curate events and yeah. Awesome. That's cool. And my name's Lynn Brown Summers. And so I'm uh, retired, thank goodness, from healthcare. But uh, in that particular time, that spanned, I am an organizer. I'm an activist still, even though I've retired um, professionally from healthcare. I do media, but I'm also the president over the Black Voice Foundation. So um, storytelling and media has been in my lifeline for, you know, well over 50 years. So I continue to do that. Um, I do a lot of farming. And so when it comes down to taking pictures, one of my, and I'm so glad that we've met because you're going to help me, I, I pray, a yes. collaboration. I started taking pictures of um, a lot of the black farmers that are here. And there's not too many left. Um, and I have uh, black and Hispanic community gardeners mm. and they're all in their 80s and 90s so I'm trying to capture their stories before they pass on because that mm. knowledge one of the things that I've seen is once they pass on that knowledge is gone and um, I learned that in corporate America when somebody retires if you haven't tapped into that then what ends up happening is that you're going to constantly have to figure out how to how did that person make it so smooth how did that how did they make that work and so i'm seeing that when it comes down to the farming um, in the community garden so i'm trying to capture their stories i would love to do a calendar of some sort so that is one of those projects that i've been just capturing pictures and talking to them over the last two years. So um, wear multiple hats like all of you and love storytelling. So I think for, I think for me, San Bernardino is representative of passion and heart. I think mm -hmm. folks always look at this region as like downtrodden, but for me, I think it's the opposite, and it's because of the people. Because mm -hmm. the people that live here, you know, they may be struggling, but I think they make, you know, they make up for it with with the passion and the heart, with with the commitment to their communities, and so. You know, you see that through the arts. You see that through this center here, the Garcia Center for the Arts. Um, and you see it, I mean, even in, in you know, in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, with, with Latinos, you know, I, I go to Muscoy and it's unique how I see all these street vendors and mm -hmm. um, they've created their own culture. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's unique to me. So I think I would just say heart and passion is, is what really, um, is what San Bernardino is about for mm -hmm. me. Along the same lines, like, yeah, I would describe us as, like, resilient people. 
you know, despite everything that's happened, um, we're always just waking up the next day and fighting for what's better, what's best for our family. And I think we're just really creative because, I mean, a lot of creativity is just being creative at problem solving. Mm. So we have a lot of issues. And so I, I see like just people trying to fix or like solve those issues in the most creative ways through art, through um, being an activist. And it's really inspiring to me in how they do that. So just creativity and resilience. Yeah, I totally agree with both of y'all. Like, especially in Muskoi, with all of the street vendors coming out and taking that space of, like, now people have that space to just go and have food on, like, a Friday night if they want to. Yeah. Like, before, we'd have to figure out which houses had it. Um, and now we're creating those spaces. And I think that translates to, like, more of San Bernardino is that people are starting to take up their space and more and more space and claim it. Um, and I just absolutely love that because you could see it through like the arts specifically because I'm heavily involved in the arts and like everyone there is just so caring. And I have this conversation over and over again whenever I see people and I'm just like, we are like at a prime where everyone just cheers one another on. We all want to be involved with one another and see how we can like collaborate or just like lift one another up. And we all want to attend one another's events and mm -hmm. we're gonna attend and we're gonna support. We're not gonna bring one another down. And it doesn't matter if there's two of like the same thing, like it's okay, like it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. And I think I really appreciate that support that everyone is collectively joining in on. Yeah, mm. I love it. And I guess I look at San Bernardino eclectic. Mm. And it's it goes back what each one of you guys are saying. But being here as long as I have and watching stuff um, change, but still staying the same, just different players, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, and we're sitting here and, and we, we start looking at um, just San Bernardino as a whole. And people ask me, I'm like, San Bernardino is the largest county in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's my first intro. And then I'm like, but you just, you have to see all the things that are going on. And we have live in pockets, but all of the pockets come together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and just like you said, somebody might be in up in Highland and we hear about something and then we take off and we go down to wherever the down to the orange show. You yeah. know, so, yeah. and so and so unless you live in a bubble, you don't know what's going on. And I feel bad for people that drive into LA because that's where their work is. Mm. They miss everything else that we do here. So mm. I, I think that when people say they don't like it or it's whatever, it's because they don't they They're don't not put their self into mm -hmm. what this community is all about. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think yeah. Oh, go. okay. I, well yeah, I think they're just settled in their ways. I feel a lot of people have just given up. And I think that's kind of lazy. I think instead of giving up, we should dive deeper. And it will give us a lot of answers and we'll find a lot of beautiful things. Like, yeah, San Bernardino's, um, you know, there is crime and there is poverty, but I think there's beauty in, you know, the struggle and there's beautiful people behind that. Um, yeah. yeah, for me, um, when I, I went to UC Irvine and so I lived in Irvine for four years and I was like, I'm never coming back to San Bernardino because I'm going to get stuck. I don't want to come yeah. back. And that was my thing. And then I came back and I was like, I started going to coffee shops. I started meeting everyone. And it's that actively doing things and going out of your comfort zone to meet people. Like as soon as you meet one person, then it just starts to like blossom from there. Um, and now I'm just like, I love it and I want to be here and I want to like yeah. help it grow and I want to see it grow because it is growing. Because before um, we, I feel like before I would say downtown, but I never meant San Bernardino. 
And now I can say downtown and people will know that I'm talking about San Bernardino and like there's five different events going on at downtown in yeah. one day, you know? So it's exactly. thriving. I love it. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also the years and years of work that mm -hmm. have gone towards making this community what it is. Cause, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, folks who have raised families here for generations, right? Like your mm -hmm. family, Lynn, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's it's also a testament to that work, right? The work that that our, you know, our predecessors have done. Mm -hmm. And I think what we've done is like just kind of continue that on, right? And mm -hmm. create a culture that is unique to us as people living in San Bernardino, people living in the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for me, I never complain. I mean, I used to as a kid because I'd, I'd kind of see, you know, San Bernardino empty. Um, but then I, I realized, you know what? It's not, it's not about the coffee shops. It's not about all these places. It's, it's the people. It's mm -hmm. the community themselves that make this what it is, you know? And I think um, the culture is so rich here. And I, I, just, yeah. I just hope that people that are from L.A. or from other parts of California or the U.S. even, you know, see this because i mean it's it's rich with culture it's rich with art and mm -hmm. i think it's it's rich with with heart and passion for sure yeah, yeah. definitely i remember one time it's just a short story and i promise um and that's one of my biggest things i tell stories to get a point across mm -hmm. so please forgive <laughs> me but i worked on an organizing campaign in kansas city missouri and so every other weekend i would come home and so I'm sitting in the airport and I ran into this guy because he's coming into Ontario. Mm. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at him like, Are you, do you know where you're going? And I'm thinking maybe he's just, he should be going to LA or something. I, I didn't know what was going on. And he was like, I'm going to the IE. And I'm sitting there and I was like, what? <laughs> and I said, have you ever been to the IE? And he was like, no, but I read about it. And I mean, he was so excited. Mm. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. I said, well, you know what? This is what you can do because, you know, I'm still proud of it. But it was mm. so funny because this guy is just like excited about the IE. <laughs> yeah. and, just, and so I saw him, I want to say, maybe a year later because it was an 18-month stint that I was there. Mm. And he was like, I told you I was going to love it. it. It's better than here. Mm. I've been there during the summer. Uh, during the summertime, it was hot, but it wasn't muggy hot. And I've been there yeah. during the wintertime, and it's not, you know, and he was sitting there like, it's no snow. And he just started telling me mm. all the things that sometimes we miss mm. living here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I thought that was, that was like one of those stories that I was so amazed that somebody was so mm. excited. And he had never been here. <laughs> hey, it's hot, but you know the mountains is not too far. It's just like That's a true. thirty minute drive. You could get you know a nice little breeze at the lake or something like yeah. that. That's what I always tell folks. You know, <laughs> like um, in perfectly in the middle. If you want to go to mountains, thirty minutes. Beach, an hour. Yeah, so we're we're in a good spot. Like for our city, we're really in a good spot. We very have central. like very good access to um, all these places. But um, I relate to to you a lot. Like going to college and like oh i don't want to go back mm. um i think especially i saw that in high school when everyone was going like planning their college stuff like oh, i want to get out you know like i don't want to be stuck here and then i went to college and i realized wow i feel like so lonely here and not understood and the people like the culture was like a culture class mm. so i came back and i was like way more thankful and i think i think it takes that outside perspective to make you more grateful for like the place that raised you and the place that gave you like the values that you have. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. First of all, I will say that I do not like the way that everybody else from the outside represents us. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm I don't like the fact that they say that we have the in January, all of a sudden, crime rates, you know, the highest and all this other stuff. And so I think, I think that's why I like the media and like the fact that my parents um, bought this newspaper from the students at UCR mm. um, because their story wasn't being told. So I think what we have to do is 
tell our story because I don't like the narrative that somebody from the outside says. So, um, because there's so much more positive than there is negative. So, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, we have to tell our own story. We have to take the narrative back. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, the facts are facts, right? And the facts show that our communities are, are struggling. But it's not representative of the entire narrative, right? And mm -hmm. I think um, it's frustrating sometimes to read about, and I'm just throwing this example out because this is like what I work on, but around, you know, air pollution and environmental racism, mm -hmm. you know, the facts are the facts. And oftentimes, you know, some of the corporate newspapers will gloss over the issue and they'll praise the industry without necessarily addressing the impacts. And I think what community newspapers catch, papers like the Black Voice News, like the Inland Empire Community News, and so many others is those stories in between, right? And the stories of the advocates that are pushing for, uh, you know, for, for better progress on clean air, better progress for community. And, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree. We, we need to tell our own stories. And I think all of us here do that, right, in our mm -hmm. own way. And yeah. um, that's really what drove me to like journalism and storytelling was the fact that I was reading the paper every morning and not seeing things around San Bernardino or like, you know, I mean, even seeing things, you know, from like the black or like the brown perspective, you know, and I think um, that's changed, right, over time, but I feel that there's a lot more to do. And I think that's why so many people in this community are taking it upon themselves to tell these stories, you know, because they're not being told. And, um, you know, for me, it's refreshing to see that, refreshing to mm -hmm. see different stories, different storytellers, because, um, you know, media shouldn't be conglomerated, right? There shouldn't be like one company or several companies trying to tell you what to, to be informed about. It should be, you know, diverse. It should be a uh, wide range. You should have multiple options. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think we're beginning to do that here. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I completely agree in the fact that we need to tell our own stories um, because I've been, I most recently saw there's going to be like some music festival here and the music festival and their programming, they usually have the city itself on the programming. And then when they like came out with the flyer for this one, they just put Southern California. Yeah. Like, so they're literally erasing us from the narrative when mm -hmm. we're the ones hosting all of these people. Um, but, like, just like how you said with, like, the farmers and them dying out and not knowing their stories and not being able to tell their stories, it's about us reclaiming our narrative and um, getting those stories out so that way people can hear them from us and the narrative doesn't, like we claim it. Um, and I especially like that people are coming out with like films based on yeah. like the photographers here or based on like the education system here. And so like it's firsthand um, experiences and then you get to kind of like talk with these people afterwards because it's such a like tight-knit community that you can figure out your way to these yeah. people and then you can ask them even more questions about it and then you get informed by there and so that's why I see the social media and I see all of like the flies and the publications but I'm just like okay but how can I talk to you in person so that way I can like see what's going what's actually going on mm -hmm. um Absolutely. yeah yeah I think when it comes to representation like true representation, it has to be in the hands of the people that are being represented. And so I see that now, like people are stepping up and it's been happening slowly. And I think I see it now because of like social media and like how much that's helped us. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did a, a study in college comparing like the news media versus film. And it was surrounding kind of what was happening in the 90s with LA and the riots. Mm -hmm. and. I found that the news media used very interesting like verbiage that yeah. was like had racist undertones yeah. of like violent black man, violent Latino does this. And I do see that with how people cover like things happening in San Bernardino. It's very like racist undertones of how they frame that narrative. Mm -hmm. 
And they only show one side of it. It's never like the full holistic view of what's happening. And so what I see with these creatives, with filmmakers and like photographers, they're showing their perspective of how it is to be raised in this community. And they're not being fake of saying like, it was beautiful and it was a little hard, but it's raw and it's honest. And um, it's coming from a good place of like, look where I came from, look at like the beauty, like like maybe like an image of like a paletero walking in the streets and there's candles like on the side of like the, of the concrete. And so um, there's, there's a difference in between what the news media is saying and what us people are saying. And we should never, one thing that I'm, the older I get, mm -hmm. the less I want to apologize or sugarcoat anything. Yeah. So we should never apologize for the things that go on in the streets. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised on the west side of San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, my God, I would never, I could never live there. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? I know the Jacksons. I know the Johnsons. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember whenever I used to walk home from school and if I got in trouble, I would get whooped by the Jacksons, the Cunninghams, and such and such before I got home. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Take another way around. <laughs> so, no. so, but it was the community mm -hmm. helped raise who we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't ever want us to apologize for what happens here. Mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. thing I, the only thing that I ask is that we represent who we are mm -hmm. and we, we have to have ownership to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as long as we do that, I think other people then will sit there and say, dang, we can't say this about them. Wow, we can't do this because we're gonna call them out each time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I think within the last decade, there's been really this push for like reclaiming the narrative mm -hmm. and reclaiming space. Yeah. I know that was brought up earlier. And um, and the reason why I say that is because the bankruptcy, I think, brought on a lot of negative press, um, mm -hmm. a lot of negative stories around San Bernardino and the issues surrounding it. Um, you know, and we can't allow for a couple of bad apples to sour the entire community, right? Because we're talking about a 200,000 plus, you know, where, you know, 200,000 plus people live, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, I've seen just a lot of folks just respond to that, respond to the negativity, respond to the issues with, you know, the realism, right, around the hardships, but mm -hmm. also around, um, you know, the desires and the aspirations for a better community, right? And I think, you know, for my time living here and, and, and working here, I think my work has really revolved around responding to the leadership and the lack of leadership. And I think there's a lot of people in this community that, you know, want to really take, you know, take this city and just make it grow and make it a little bit stable, right? But I think also it's, sort of paying homage to to the people that have been here before right who have done the work who have mm -hmm. um provided so much and just you know also just reviving it right because um you know all these stories all these narratives i think all tie back to the to one thing in my opinion and that's just having pride having ownership in your community and i think uh you know when i do a story you know i'm i'm not just thinking about myself i'm thinking about obviously the audience, but also thinking about what people want to see, and what mm -hmm. people want to know, um, you know, and I think, I think that's important, you know, it's, it's just recognizing that, um, that there's just a, like a renaissance, I guess, right, for lack of a better way to put yeah, it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where can people go to find the information about what's going on in San Bernardino? I will tell you, other than our newspaper and, and Gloria's and all the other community papers, the best place is the barbershops and the beauty shops, mm -hmm. hands down. I will tell you, whenever I needed to know something mm -hmm. that wasn't even in the newspaper, 
because, you know, all the community newspapers are weekly and they have a deadline. And so something might start jumping off on Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all of a sudden it's planned. And, and yeah. if you're sitting in the, in the beauty shop, and I had sons, so I was always at the barber shop with them. And I would hear something, and I'm like, well, I didn't know about that. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and so then, hurry, and then I could hurry up and change things and rearrange stuff and then take off and go. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if you're not with the community newspaper, um, even to today, if you're in the beauty shop or in the barber shops, the, you're going to get all the information, stuff that you don't want to know, but everything that you need to know. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I want to echo that and say that, you know, barbershops for sure, but also like, you know, your local markets, you know, like I know like in our community, Latino Mexican communities, we have like Garneserias, we mm-hmm. have little markets and um, just, I hear a lot of chatter and just people that know each other, you know, mm-hmm. one person will know each other and it's, it's it's a little community, and I think people pass information and pass invitations to parties and stuff like that. So um, that's that's super unique. So I I really resonate with that. Um, also, you know, I, you know, social media. I think I, I think um, I always tell people, you know, when you're posting online and when you're putting something online, you're engaging in an act of journalism, mm-hmm. and here's why, right? Because yeah. As long as you're receiving and delivering a message, mm. you're you're invoking journalism, right? So, um, you know, you may not think people are peeping your stories or whatever, or peeping like your 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 feed on your on your Facebook or on your Instagram, but it's powerful, you know. And I think that's how I, personally, that's how I I've, I've been able to sort of kind of share news that maybe might not be necessarily in in a paper or in a you know, or with my byline. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think social media has been like a really good tool for me. I mean, I'm on it all the time, that's why. But um, <laughs> um, I think I started off first finding out about these things because I got connected to SB Food Fest. Mm. And I DM'd them, I started working um, close with them. And then, you know, the algorithm suggests things. And so I started following like all these like local pages like Revive San Bernardino, um, San, I think it was like We Are the Change San Bernardino. Um, SB Food Fest and I think everybody's like super interconnected Mm -hmm. and they're willing to support you know how like we're very supportive like other people's events and so I'm always seeing even like um, the Garcia Center they're always posting like um, art programs are coming um, giveaways for children maybe like this weekend there's a Michelada Fest downtown um, art (laughs) art exhibitions so I think you know just getting connected and like doing your research of finding those pages because um, they're really helpful. If not, you get entertainment and you also get like a good education sometimes. I mean, I've <laughs> I've gotten to like learn about a lot of things about San Bernardino through these events. So mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to start off with social media as well. Um, I'm going to name drop all of my friends right now because they deserve all of the credit. Um, <laughs> creative Grounds, they... Mm-hmm are in downtown San Bernardino and it's a studio and they repost all of Mm -hmm. everything that's going on in that alleyway. Um, And they are the people who are just like, just just do what you want. You could do it. Mm -hmm. Cheer you on, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, And then um, also like the Garcia Center. The Garcia Center reposts all of yeah. like the events that are going on and even if you just message them like here can you repost this they will mm-hmm. um and then viva la boba is very active yeah. in um what they do and if you have something you could go put it on their little poster board in mm-hmm. the actual store or you can go online and they'll share it for you um but i also think again it's the people it's the people where mm-hmm. You're not going to know unless you know. And so you have to make that like active, conscious decision Mm -hmm. to seek that information out. Um, And so like once you start meeting all of these new people, like I just met y'all today. And now I know that I can like look at this, these two different newspapers in one day. That's how quickly I figured this out. Um, And so now I have 
more sources. And it's just about meeting different people and talking to them. And through there, you'll figure out all of the events and also just what's going on and how people are. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing that, and I'm glad, I mean, just sitting here talking and it's like been so cool. Um, love you guys' energy and, and some of your resources and the fact that you know my niece and this all this other <laughs> stuff. Um, what I'm starting to see is how my parents raised us. You never just stick with, with not so much your kind. I shouldn't say it mm. that way. But what you have to, you with. have to be, but you have to explore mm-hmm. and you have to be willing to go to Redlands. You have to be willing to go outside of your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people aren't and sometimes people can't. So yeah, I don't yep. want, I mm-hmm. don't want anybody to, but if you just take that opportunity to sit there and say, you know what, I can go across town. I can go over here and meet somebody new and do something different. And and I think social media has done that where mm-hmm. it exposes us and we're open to more things and we see more things. But I just think that, and this is just for anybody, that's not just for San Bernardino, don't limit yourself because mm-hmm. then that's whenever you live in this box and you can never get outside of that box. And yeah. then... You just don't you just don't see anything else, and you don't see the beauty of what's going on around you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, you know it's interesting because, and this is sort of going back to the to the last question, but like, I think sometimes when it comes to media, you know, it's quicker to just make a phone call and mm-hmm. get like a quote or get like a, you know, just do an interview. But it's I, I I find it more enriching, and it just strengthens stories when you're out and about exploring right you're you're walking you know the west side of san bernardino to scope out different scenes you're in relins to scope out different scenes and i think that's how you also enrich the stories because you're actually walking the communities and you're going up to the people and you're you're making that connection right and so i think um it's about the people it's about connecting Mm -hmm. with the people Mm -hmm. first and foremost you know and uh um i just I just love listening to people. I could, you know, I could talk for days yeah. and I could listen to people for days because it's about, mm-hmm. it's about those connections, right? And I think um, when you take the time to listen to folks, I mm-hmm. think you find that you have more similarities than you do differences, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I do think, like, I feel like social media could be that window. And once you step through, you get to know the people. And that's just, like, opens up a whole new world, like, that's how it was for me, you know. I went, I saw social media, saw an event. I went to an event and I started talking mm-hmm. to all these people and I started to get to know them. And they're like, oh, have you gone to this? Oh, do you know this organization? I'm like, no, I don't. And then, <laughs> Here we go. and so like, it just opens like a, like a whole like world of events and things outside the city, inside the city. So I think people really just have to get involved, you know, in the community and, it'll open up like so many avenues of like possibilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think when it comes to what I want to see for the future of San Bernardino, I would just say growth. I think now that we've come together mm-hmm. as a community, we see how strong we are and you know, there's a lot of things coming up soon with like the whole redevelopment of downtown. And I think, you know, if we step up and we let our voices be heard, we won't be like gentrified. And I think a lot of people here, they have businesses and I think they need to step up and like own it up. Cause like we need them. We want to see like these local businesses and we want to support you. And so um, I think in the future, I do see like a renaissance, like you said, of business owners, of artists mm. um, stepping up and like sharing their talents with the community. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I want to see more people owning their spaces and owning the buildings that they're in because I know that we're growing. And so 
I'm just like, please, everyone buy all of the buildings that you can now <laughs> because we're growing. So I want you to stay here and I want you to thrive. Um, but also, like, just more events so that way people can get to know one another, hear the news that's going on. Um, and arts. I'm just like, I want art plastered everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> I want more, like, <laughs> galleries or mm -hmm. outings that we could have so like it's not just events or it's like a food event it's an event for like there's different sorts of events for different types of people so that way mm -hmm. each person that lives here can enjoy themselves in whichever way they choose and they don't always have to stick to well we only have food events here so <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stay home <laughs> like I want I just want to see an expansion of the type of events and the type of mm -hmm. spaces that we hold um, and yeah, arts. I'm just like art. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, I want to see similar. I think arts, art is it. And I think arts from just a wide range of folks. Um, I also want to see less warehouses mm -hmm. because you know, I know these are bringing jobs, but they're not bringing the best kind of jobs. Um, yeah, right. You know, and I think if we want a better community, if we want a better quality of life, we need better jobs. And it's not to say that, you know, these warehouses should be destroyed, but I think we need to move away from that mindset that it's just warehouses, it's just logistics, right? There's more to this community. Um, there's more to just the warehouse job. And it's not to knock those people because this is dignified work, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. um, there's so much space and we shouldn't be filling the space with just warehouses, you know? Mm -hmm. We need more galleries. We need more community centers. We need more community gardens. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think we could do that, but I think it, it, it starts with the kind of vision that we have. And, you know, it seems like everybody at this table has a vision of a, of a future that, kind of moves away from the status quo and goes more into what we want to see as a community, mm -hmm. so. And to piggyback on all of it, that's where we have to become active with our politicians. Mm -hmm. Because in the long run, they're doing stuff behind our backs. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize the things mm -hmm. that they're doing. So if we want to show that we're activists, that we like the arts, that we love gardening, that we love all the things that we love here. We have to then turn around and tell our politicians, we vote for you. We can vote you out until we find somebody and one of you guys may run. Somebody may run for something because otherwise your voice gets lost. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we have to be able to speak for the people that have to work three jobs because in those warehouses, they're working two or three jobs. If they work 12-hour shifts and they work four 12-hour shifts, if they have kids, if they have yeah. all these things that are going on, they can't talk. Mm -hmm. They can't speak for themselves because they're just trying to keep their heads above water, trying to, to survive and make sure that their kids and their families are taken care of. Um, in one of my little stories, I remember I lived near the train tracks over in Rialto and hate hearing the horns at four o'clock in the morning. But because of the policies and all the things that are in place, federal as well as state, I went to my local elected officials in my, and I said, we have to do something. They said, I said, I've been places where there's quiet zones. Mm -hmm. And because I spoke up, people were, and I, and I started talking to the neighbors. They were like, well, let you do whatever you want because you know what the problem is. Mm -hmm. So I know I kind of went off of what we were talking about or the question, but it still kind of falls back into it. How do you want us to be viewed in San Bernardino or how it should look that we become active and realize that if we all have the time, like I yeah. said, I'm, I'm retired. We have to speak for the people that can't. Yeah. We have to be able, I, I'm a firm believer. I go out and I uh, do a lot of education on, on voting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I tell people, if your family member is in jail, then make sure that you're able to vote for them. Educate yourselves. Yeah. So that's how I see us being able to have the strength and the power back in this area. It goes back to changing the narrative, is telling our story, mm -hmm. um, taking it back, is we tell people how we think that things should be run. If you look at some of the streets or some of the buildings down here just on East Street, okay, again, older than you guys, and if you go across the street from the police department, that used to be a bell. So it was operating. So it had nothing but phone operators. Mm -hmm. um, and it's owned by somebody that doesn't live in this country. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. So we have stuff that we should be able to say, you know what? They're not here. They're not doing anything. We need to take it back. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, what drives like the desire for change, like you're saying, Lynn, is these narratives, right? Telling the stories and really telling the stories of why people want change in, in San Bernardino and why people are actively pushing for change now yeah. or have been for years now, right? And I think, um, you know, we have to really take initiative, like in the sense that if we want that change, we have to act upon it, whether it's running for office, whether it's uh, becoming a community leader, whether it's be, you know, being an artist with political commentary, right? Mm -hmm. Um, all these different things, right, that you could do to really make a difference. And I feel that, you know, San Bernardino has always had that. And I think it's just in this current generation, in this current age, it, it looks like this. It looks like more arts, you know, more arts. It looks like more murals. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful, you know. And I think we just have to make sure that as the future moves forward, that we do what we can also to protect our community, right, mm -hmm. and to make sure that you know, these developers or these people from the outside recognize that this is our community, exactly. right? And mm -hmm. that we're reclaiming it, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really like how, I mean, even in this table, we have this like joining of like artists and activists, which I really like because, you know, artists love telling stories. And I, I, I think I've seen that with your documentary about, you know, environmental racism. You did that, right? Uh, you kind I do, of, I little video, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I really like how you use like, film to tell these stories of like highlighting these problems because like most people like that's just every day and like, it gets hidden in like their busyness Absolutely. and so you know using film to highlight these things but also using activism because um we have to fight and make our voices heard and you know keeping people in government accountable mm -hmm. and also you know promoting policies that make people want to live here and start business here and you know better the education system here so yeah. i really think you know like coming together is going to help us yeah and to go off of that um i've just recently had this conversation with jordan your niece um and how how you're saying film and showing that to people who normally wouldn't have the time to go through all of these thesis papers yeah. that have these yeah. writings yes. that yes. not even i can comprehend and they're just so <laughs> stale and i'm like okay, but like, what's this gonna do? Like you just wrote this paper and who's it really gonna go to and who is it gonna help? And like, how do we get that information to like the broader general people who normally wouldn't be in those spaces? They normally mm -hmm. wouldn't have the time to even sit down and like spend like 20 hours reading like something yeah. so big. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's where like the artists come in mm -hmm. and share those stories and we help make that accessible to others. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's so cool that you said that because Jordan's um, dad, my brother, he's now collecting all these laws because like my mom raised us and she would say certain things and we used to think that it was kind of racist because it was like, you have to be 200% better than everybody else. And we're sitting there like 200% better, 200% better. What the heck is 200% mm -hmm. better? And what does she mean? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a law on the books in New York that someone black had to be 200% better than their white counterpart. Mm -hmm. so, so then you sit there and you're just like, oh, that's what that means. And you don't realize that there's all these crazy laws on the books. And it, it shows why we need to 
start telling the story, start educating ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we, like us sitting here, I love doing research. Looks like you love doing research, but we could sit there and compile the research after I sat there and read through it and said, oh, here, you want to do... <laughs> You want to sit here and do a play on all this, all of this stuff that goes on here or what happened so that people, it not only is it written, but it's also visual and somebody might paint a mural mm -hmm. um, and it's still getting told because we're, I worked for 35 years. That 35 years, I worked a lot and that's why I even though I did a lot of stuff in the community, I couldn't do a lot in the community. Mm -hmm. Because if I had to do overtime, and, and I know we were talking about this earlier, we're asking people to do certain things, but if they work two jobs, if they work 12-hour shifts, if they work 10-hour shifts, you're tired, you're dog mm -hmm. tired, mm -hmm. and you're not able to participate. So it's just like one of those things that if it was a short story, Somebody would be able to capture what we needed to make sure that that happened. And, and if it was a mural, as I'm driving past, I'm sitting there like, oh, what? And you, you see the whole storyline. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that when I was in Cuba. Oh, I love Cuba. And if you guys get a chance, go. <laughs> <laughs> because they totally. had the whole storyline of the revolution and all mm. the things that happened. And you captured it all on one street corner. That's just my little two cents. <laughs> Beautiful. So again, uh, Lynn Summers, and I am president with Black Voice Foundation, but I'm also owner operator of Summers Prep. So just make sure that you go on. I teach everybody how to garden, teach you how to preserve things that our ancestors did a long time ago and forge. So it's like a cool thing. <laughs> Um, and I'm Ulisa Mendoza. Um, my Instagram is yu.lis.sa. And then that's for, for my photography. My um, art one is Lavender Art. It's L-A-V-E-N-D-X-R-T. Um, and then I'm also part of the Arts Connection. Stay tuned with all of the projects that I'm doing there. That's where all of the art for San Bernardino specifically is going to come through, which I'm so excited about. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm Sophia, and you guys can follow me. Right now, I only have Instagram, so at Sophia the Warrior is where you can follow me. And where you can find me, anywhere. There's an event. I'm just always trying to cover stuff and, like, show the beauty, so, yeah. Yeah, and I'm Anthony Victoria. I have my own publication called The Frontline Observer. You can follow that on Twitter and Instagram, The Frontline Observer, or go online, frontline-observer.com. Uh, also, in, uh, you know, a community organizer with the People's Collective for Environmental Justice. Uh, you could follow them at PC for EJ, and uh, you could follow my own handle at Eye of the Barrio, and I'm on Twitter mm. and Instagram. So, cool. And uh, thank you, thank for, you joining for joining us. us. This, this is, is Just SB. SB.